Hello folks and uh, welcome back once again to our Tesla project and this video I just want to make it nice and quick um, it's more just a response to the previous video uh, where we were running the motor with the inverter put back together into it uh, you know a lot of people commented both on the video and on the forum that I was running the motor in reverse and that that was a bad thing well uh, I didn't realize when I was running the motor here that it was in reverse. I realized it once I was editing the video and that's why I put a little smart ass comment in there um, about running the motor in reverse. So yeah, I know that uh, you're not supposed to do that and that Tesla don't do that themselves because there is no oil pumping going on in the gearbox when you're in reverse so I think they limit to 15 miles per hour. Um, we have just today I've been doing a few more tests so I thought I would make this video just to assure you guys that yes I did know that what I was doing was not a good thing to be doing and we won't be doing that again in the future but we've been doing a few more little things here today we got some software updates going on so I'm just gonna Jump in now, show you some of this stuff, and we'll wrap this one up pretty quickly. Stay with us. All right, so back again here, drive unit as we had in the last video. Uh, running from low voltage here, just because there's no need to be high voltaging at the minute for these tests. Uh, one of the advantages of the Tesla motor is that it has such a low impedance that you can get it up to really high RP, RPMs uh, with very low DC bus voltages uh, when we're in a no load uh, condition here. So right now the condition that we're simulating is here that you have uh, jumped in the car, you got your foot on the brake pedal uh, and you just turned on and so what we're going to do now is we're going to release the brake. I've got a bunch of wires here, it's crazy, I really need to build a little switch panel for myself. So. This is us here now, sitting on the brake pedal, and I'm going to release the brake. Brakes off, and we go into creep mode. So this is now running forward, by the way. And if we then put the brakes back on, uh, we'll basically brake the motor to a standstill. Now again, keeping in mind that I've got regen turned off here because we're running from a power supply. So again, if we release the brakes, um, we go into creep mode, so we'd be, cre be creeping forward. And I can then bring on throttle, and we can accelerate up to whatever speed we would want to be at. And we would then be regening back down here, um, but uh, obviously we're not doing that now. So then the next thing then, in the nice to have category, is to have cruise control. So cruise control is operational. Bring the camera in here. So there we are. We're creeping along and you know we're gonna go drive the car so we're gonna accelerate up to whatever speed we want we want to be doing. So let's say that's the speed we want to be doing. Just tap the cruise control button. I can take my foot off the throttle, or my hand off the throttle. Now, and we are basically now cruising. As you can see, I've got, you know, I've got no throttle pedal press. Uh, cruise control is now engaged and up to a particular throttle setting that we would, would want. Um, the motor will basically continue to run at that speed with a closed loop feedback. So if we go up a hill, We'll put on more throttle if we go down a hill. Uh, we'll start putting some regen in there. And again, all you have to do to stop uh, cruise control is press the brake pedal. There it is, brake. So you just tap the brake. And what we'll do now is we'll basically just uh, 
drop back down and go back to creep mode. So just a few little small things there. Just thought you guys would like to see. Alrighty, so that's about it. Uh, again, main purpose of this was just to assure you that yes, I did cop on to the fact afterwards that I was running the motor back the motor backwards. Uh, not a good thing to be doing, and uh, we won't be doing it again. So that's it. I uh, just got a few of the nice to haves working there nicely now, and the last thing that we're working on is the temperature sensors. And oh yeah, that's one other thing I wanted to say. So basically the temperature sensors uh, in the motor, there's a lot of them, both in the motor and in the heatsink. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they are NTC thermistor type, but I have absolutely no information on them. Now, pretty soon, in fact possibly in our next video, we are going to be running the motor with some coolant through it. I've bought a little cheap submersible pump and we'll get a bucket and we'll set up some hoses and so on. And what I'll do is um, I might even get a little immersion element thing so I can warm the coolant and try and get a few different set points of the resistance of the thermistors. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to ask you guys is if anyone has any info on these parts or even has I don't know, a motor taken apart or has some of them that they could even loan me that I could play with them, just you know, put them in a you know, put them in some boiling water, put them in some in some iced water, that'd be great. Or if you guys want to do that for me, then please do so. Um so yeah, if anyone can help out with that, that'd be great. Failing that, uh we will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. And uh, check out links in the description uh, for my Patreon crowdfunding uh, GitHub where you can download all of the wonderful files and firmwares for this crazy system and future crazy Tesla systems. And um, yeah, that's about it guys. Uh, happy cruise controlling.